Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to share with you a personalized card idea. I'm going to use the new Mirrored Arch Nested Sprigs press plate from this month's release and I'm going to use it with last month's release, the floral alphabet. I'm going to use the J and I'm going to create a personalized card. Now I've got all the floral alphabet press plates that I have here and most of them fit in here but you can see this W doesn't fit so this isn't going to work with all of those letters but it is going to work with some of them and it's a great way to create a personalized card for someone so one of my daughter's name starts with the letter J so I'm going to make a card actually I'm going to make two cards here for her and I'm going to use the J in the center of the card and then I'm going to use some alphabet dies to create her name now I cleaned off my press plate because I hadn't cleaned it off after the last time I used it. And I'm going to use some black Durabrite here. I actually thought this was mixed media heavy stock when I grabbed the package, but then I pulled it out of the package, realized I was wrong and figured I would just go with it anyways. So really any black cardstock would work for here. For this, it doesn't necessarily have to be the Durabrite. I was just curious what was going to happen. And because I'm working on Durabrite, I do add an alcohol ink pearl at the end. So if you used different cardstock, you could use different things at the end instead of that if you wanted. So I have my press plate inked and I'm using some Cloud9 Summer Garden Interference Ink Pad. And this one turns green on white cardstock, but it has a blue shimmer on black cardstock. And you can see it when I tilt it into the light, but it's not super in your face visible. It's very subtle. And I thought with that wet ink, because I don't think it's actually going to dry on that Durabrite, I would seal it in by putting some clear embossing powder on it. So I'm just scooping that powder on there. I didn't um, use my embossing powder tool before time and I really should have just to make sure that that powder would only stick to the areas that I wanted it to but there's an easy fix for that I just get a small brush and I just brush away any powder that's stuck to an area that I don't want it you want to make sure to do this before you melt anything with an embossing tool once it's melted it's not going to move or be able to be removed so you want to make sure to remove that ahead of time with that powder on my ink, I can take my embossing tool and I'm going to melt it. Now this black Durabrite is heat resistant. It's not necessarily heat proof. So you'll see it warp and bend as I'm using it. I'm keeping that embossing tool moving, but it will flatten out mostly by the time I'm done. There is some bends in there when I'm done, but most of it comes completely flat and I find that a lot of the warping happens while it is hot and then as it cools it just flattens out. Once that is totally done I can set that to the side and I'm actually going to create two cards here. I wanted to show two different techniques or two different looks and I'm doing one on this black and the other one I'm going to do on white mixed media heavy stock. So I wanted to make sure that all of that embossing powder was completely melted. So there was some areas that I noticed weren't totally melted. So I made sure that that was done. And then for my name part of the front of the card, I want to do that to coordinate this embossing here. So I have that uh, Cloud9 interference ink pad. I'm putting some on some black cardstock and I'll show you in a second how it looks on white. So you see the front of that ink pad, how it has green and blue on it. It shows blue on the black cardstock and it shows green on the white. And I love these ink pads. They're like magic to me. I have a whole playlist with using them because it never ceases to amaze me how they look different on the light cardstock than they do on the black. And there's many things you can do with them. So I cleaned that plate off just to make sure that I had a nice clean plate for the next technique. And like I said, I'm using white mixed media heavy stock, but I'm going to take some forest moss distress pad and I'm going to ink that plate. And instead of using my better press with this, I'm going to be embossing with my Spellbinders Platinum Sticks machine. Now, because I'm pressing that paper onto that plate and it's inked, I want to make sure that there is no ink on the base plate of my die cutting machine because as that paper gets pressed, if there's any ink there, it's going to get pressed into that ink. So you wanna make sure to clean all of that off. Gently lay the paper on your inked plates and then your embossing mat. And we're using the stacking for the platinum sticks, the same stacking that you would use for embossing a die. And this just presses that ink into that cardstock as well as pressing that paper around those plates. So you get a beautiful, really deeply embossed look out of it. And I absolutely love the look. 
This is a technique that you can do with or without ink. I think the ink just enhances that image, but you don't need to. You could do a very subtle image by not inking those plates at all and just having that embossed look there. Now, once again, I want to create a name for the front of this card and I want it to coordinate perfectly. So what I'm going to do is use some white cardstock and I'm just going to take that forest moss ink pad and I'm just going to ink the cardstock. If you have solid ink pad or a solid cardstock that matches the ink that you've used, you can absolutely use solid cardstock and you don't have to go through this step. I just wanted to make sure that it was going to match completely and I didn't have a dark green that was going to match um, aside from cutting up an entire 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And I have tons of these white scraps, so this was an easy way to get a perfectly coordinated look. So the daughter that I'm doing this for, her name is Jasmine, so I'm taking the letters from um, these Be Bold uppercase and lowercase die sets from Spellbinders. And both of these have several letters that are doubled, but they have these little extra curly cues or extra... Um, things on them to make them a little bit fancier that you can use if you want. None of the letters that I was using had any of that on there, so I'm just using plain letters. But I love the fact that you can create any custom name. You could even just do this for sentiments if you wanted. If you had the T and just wanted to write thank you on the front and wanted something simple but bold, you could easily do that. So it doesn't have to necessarily be just for people's names or personalizing them that way. You could easily do a nice short sentiment with them. So I'm going to do once again do two cards. I'm going to do the same name on this one as well because I have the green on a longer strip. I'm just lining up those letters. They don't necessarily have to be in any order or anything. And I'm going to die cut those and set them aside. Now these letters die cut absolutely beautifully. And I love the fact that the lowercase there also comes with numbers. So if you wanted to add a number to whatever you're doing, you could easily do that with this as well. Now I wanna make sure when I'm lining up these letters and when I'm gluing them down that they are perfectly straight. So I have my Simon Says Stamp T ruler here and I'm just taping the end in place just to hopefully make it stay in place. And I'm just using the edge of the ruler just to make sure that all of those letters are perfectly lined up. Don't necessarily need a ruler for this. You could just use a straight edge of cardstock, tape that down to do the exact same thing. The only thing I wouldn't necessarily do is say a pencil line because trying to erase a pencil line around some die cuts that have a little bit of dimension to them would be a little bit more difficult. So I would do something that you can just temporarily place and then easily um, be able to line up these die cuts. Even a piece of tape taped down straight would be perfect for this. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't have anything um, a little bit crooked or trying to go by eye. Sometimes it works to get a nice straight line, but sometimes your eye fails you. So I'm using some tweezers to hold my die cuts and then put the glue on the back. I like using a liquid glue for this because you can move and shimmy things and place them so they're perfect. And having a pair of tweezers that will hold them um, gives you more surface area to put that glue and you don't necessarily have to worry about getting glue all over your fingers. And those tweezers also help with placement. By having the tweezers on there instead of your fingers, you can actually see the letter a lot better in order to be able to place it a little bit better. I'm using Barely Art glue here that I've put in a fine tipped bottle and that way I can easily get as much or as little glue as I want to in the areas and it's perfect for small die cuts like this. Now that I have one done, I'm gonna do the second one. I'll put the first letter down here, but the rest of it I'm gonna do off screen because you don't need to see exactly the same thing twice. Once I have my letters dried, I take my trimmer and I trim it down. I first trimmed it down to a one inch strip and in the end I trimmed it down to uh, three quarters of an inch strip and then the mat that I put behind it because I wanted it lined with the coordinating color that is seven eighths of an inch. I didn't want it to cover too much of the monogram on the front of the card. I wanted to be able to see that it was a J and you can see more that it's a J on the light background with the green rather than this dark background. Because it's such a subtle look on this dark background, it's a little bit harder to see that. Now, because my name is on a white piece of cardstock, I wanted to add a little bit of that to the background so it just didn't look so stark on the front. So I'm taking a piece of white cardstock. I'm taking one of the press plates from the Mirrored Arch nested sprigs plate set and I'm going to first ink that with black ink 
and put that through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 to press that in place. And then I'm going to do it with that same Cloud9 Interference Summer Garden ink pad so that I get the same color on there. Now I put my base plate and my clear plate together and then put it through the Platinum 6 to press that ink in place. And then repeat that step with the Cloud9 Summer Garden ink pad, which is the one that I used on the black cardstock. I didn't clean my press plate. I figured there was not a whole lot of ink there left after it's gone through, so I didn't see any need for it and put it through my machine. Most of the time when I do this and I double press something, I get a perfect image. This one is just slightly off, but I actually kind of really liked how it looked, so I left it. I'm going to be die cutting in anyways, and it's not gonna be a focal point on this card, so I don't think precision or it being exactly perfect is really gonna matter. The little bit of an offset adds just a touch of green to it. Like I said, I really, really liked the way it looked. After that was embossed with clear powder to coordinate with the background, I took the mirrored arch um, label dies and I chose two different sizes, one for the outside and one for the inside to create this oval so that it's going to frame that J on the card. And taped those in place just to make sure they weren't going to move on me when I go and put them through my die cutting machine and die cut them. I'm just using die tape for this so it holds the die in place but it comes off the cardstock fairly easily. And these pieces I will regularly use a couple times over just because I find when you first use them they're really quite sticky. After a while they stop sticking and stop holding your die in place. But usually you can get a few use out of, uses out of them to make that go a little bit farther. So you can see how that's going to frame the J a little bit better and in a little bit we will go and enhance the J a little bit more as well. So the pieces that I did that background on are really quite large, so I wanted to cut them down a little bit. I'm cutting them down to four inches by five and a quarter, and I do have to cut a few tips of some of those leaf pieces on there to get it down to that size. I wanna put a mat behind these pieces to frame them as well. And by cutting this down to four inches by five and a quarter, I can make sure that I have enough space to be able to actually see that mat. So I'm doing this both with the black piece as well as the white piece. They're both being cut down to four inches by five and a quarter. And um, if you didn't wanna do this, you could make this just four and a quarter by five and a half and not have to cut any of those tips off and have that for the whole front of your card. I just, for this particular one, I liked the frame on it. So I, for the white with green, I have a piece of white cardstock here and I'm just taking that green ink pad and inking around the edges so that that frame or that mat coordinates perfectly. It doesn't necessarily have to be inked that whole cardstock because you're not gonna see it. So I only ink the outer edges and you can see with that green one that I didn't even make sure that it was completely um, and totally matte. There's a little bit of different texture in there. Because the actual image itself has some lighter and darker shades, I like the look of that, so I left it. To make the flowers pop a little bit more in my J, I have some pearl mixative alcohol ink, and I'm just using a disposable eyeliner brush. You can use any thin brush for this that you are comfortable using with alcohol inks. And I'm dipping it into that alcohol ink and then coloring the image. Now you can barely see it on my surface here, but I do have a little piece of acetate that that pearl mixative is on and using that as a paint palette. I didn't want to use it on my background because, or on my surface, because alcohol ink typically does stain or it doesn't really clean off very well. This probably wouldn't have been a huge issue because it's pearl on the white background. But I wanted to make sure to do this because I wanted to make sure to remember to say if you are doing this technique and you're using a color that's anything other than white and you have a um, Tim Holtz media surface mat, you don't want to be using your alcohol inks directly on there because they will stain that background. And we want to try to keep that as pristine white as possible for as long as possible. It does mar and stain and get a little bit grungy and dirty looking anyways from use but I'm trying to prevent that for as long as possible. So I did my first coat there and I wanted to make some of those flowers just a light, a little bit brighter, a little bit more vibrant. I'm not doing it to all of them, so I'm getting some fresh pearl mixative there and just going in the centers of some of them, just brightening that up a bit. I always like it when there are some flowers that are a little bit darker, some that are brighter. Um, it just gives a little bit more variety and makes it look a little bit more interesting. 
Once that is done, I will let that dry. And really, alcohol inks only take seconds, so they don't take a whole lot of time to completely dry. For the one on the green background, I'm coloring my flowers with a couple Copic markers. This is R20 and R22. I wanted um, just a little bit of a different color added to it. You could also say watercolor those images, but because I'm using Distress Ink on that background, if I watercolored, that is a dye-based ink that is start going to start moving and blending on there, and it's going to... Um, take some of the detail out of the pressed image. So by using Copics, I don't need to worry about that. It's not gonna move that distress ink and it's not gonna take that detail out of there. I can still see that in there. I still have the edges around those flowers, but it just adds a little bit more color to it. I'm also taking some BG93 and I'm going to just color in the leaves on the monogram J, as well as a few of the leaves around the outside of the edge. I'm not doing all of them, but you certainly could if you wanted to color in all of them. I just wanted to add a little bit of extra color, but not make it all colored in. For the flowers, I do have the two colors, so that darker color is going towards the center of the flower, just adding a little bit of a shadow there. And the light color, I did the whole petal with the light color and then just a touch in the center and then went back over with the light color just to blend that out a little bit. Because these areas are so tiny, you don't really need to do a whole lot of blending. So if you wanted to, you could just do that light color, dot in the darker color, and you probably would be pretty good to go. So this BG93 is a little bit lighter shade than the Forest Moss Distress Ink. So it adds a little bit of shadow or the Distress Ink itself kind of gives a little bit of shadow around the outside of the leaves when I'm coloring. And it's one of the reasons why I chose this color. I wanted to be able to still see that detail and just have a little bit lighter color in there. Add a little bit more um, color, a little bit more detail, but not take away from that better pressed image because I really like the look of it. This is just a way to enhance it. And you could go all out and you could color all of the leaves and there's a few flowers in there. You could color those as well to coordinate, but I didn't really want to take much of the focus away from um, that beautiful better pressed image as well as that monogram in the center. So I, now I have my pieces ready to go. I can start assembling my cards together and you can see how the white just makes that black pop a little bit more and that frame around there was a little bit necessary. If it, it just had that letter on the, or that um, name on the front with the white banner, it would kind of be sticking out a little bit. It wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. Now, the one thing I realized at this point is I really liked that frame on the black background, so I wanted to create one for my light background. So I just quickly inked some of that forest moss ink onto some white cardstock, taped these dies in place, and these dies don't really want to stay in place, not because the tape isn't sticky, but because I didn't really let my ink dry. So better to let that ink dry for a little bit and then die cut it. But once again, I didn't make sure that I had a completely solid image. Same as the outer mat, I wanted to have a little bit of lights, a little bit of darks, and um, coordinate with the better pressed image. Once again, I'm gluing everything together with Barely Art glue in a fine tip bottle. And I just put an acrylic block over top just to hold things down, hold it nice and flat while I'm gluing other pieces. Just freeze up your hands a little bit and it makes sure that those cardstocks have good contact while they're drying. And with this Barely Art glue, it really only takes a few moments for that glue to start grabbing and holding and holding everything down. And I can even use that on the Juralar or Jurabrite background here. That liquid glue holds that really nicely as well. You can see I go back and forth between the two different cards, letting some areas or some layers dry a little bit longer while I'm working on the other card. I love that frame around there. I think it just adds a really nice detail and it just finishes that monogram and highlights and frames it really, really well. And because there are so many different layers in that Mirror Arts Labels die, you could actually even do more layers if you wanted to. I wanted to keep it fairly simple, so I only used the ones to create that frame. But if you wanted, you could even pop up that center even more and have that monogram more prominent, more highlighted. While I have those card bases drying, I'm just going to put my name plates on top of the mats, let those dry for a few seconds before adding them to the front of the card. And you can see those name plates are larger or wider than my card itself. I will glue them to the front of the card and then just use some scissors to trim those down. That way I can make sure that they are the perfect size and I can focus on centering that name on the card and not necessarily trying to 
trim that piece down while making sure that that name is centered. It makes it a little bit easier. I do use my fingers, if you, you might you actually see that, use my fingers to kind of give myself a, a guide as to where that edge of that piece should be on the cardstock so I'm not adding too much glue. I let that dry for a few moments and then just trim those off with a pair of scissors. Now my card is almost done, but I always like to add just a touch of sparkle to it. So I have this butterfly die from the Botanical Solarium set and I die cut some holographic cardstock. Now this is actually cardstock that was foiled with some prism foil. Anytime I do foiling, I often will do the solid hot foil with the excess. Sometimes I'll use those in the cards and sometimes I'll use them to die cut pieces. So that's what these are die cut out of, but you could easily use holographic cardstock. I dotted the center of the coral colored flowers with some stickles for a little bit of sparkle. I didn't do that on the black background because I liked the way the centers had that blue color from the ink pad and I didn't want to cover that up. But I am using two of the butterflies on the black background. Wanted to use them up and have them both on here and I liked the way the, the two of them looked there. And it also just added more of that light to that background. So here are the finished cards. We have the one with the black background that's using the Cloud9 Summer Garden Interference Ink with embossing. And I love the look of the, di or the different look between the light and the dark on that. And then we have the one here that we did our embossed background and then used Forest Moss Distress Ink for both inking the plates as well as our frame and our personalized name. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Have a fantastic day.